Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel, I'm an airline pilot and a lot of you have noticed that I stopped using GSX over the past three weeks in my videos. In today's video I want to talk about why that is since a lot of you have asked in the comments underneath the videos. Then I want to talk about general problems with GSX and most importantly their attitude towards customers and their customer support. And then I want to present you with a solution to my problem that I eventually figured out, hoping that it will help some of those of you who encountered this kind of problem themselves. But let's go ahead and start with a general problem. So why did I stop using GSX over the past couple of weeks? The answer is quite simple. It basically wasn't me who stopped using GSX, but it was GSX who stopped to work on any of my flights. Whenever I tried to open GSX and the GSX menu, I basically got this loading bar for a very long time, but then eventually it said, fail to load GSX menu, please wait, it might appear later. Now, initially I thought, well, okay, I'm just going to wait a little bit and maybe I'm just going to wait for the next update to happen, since this basically started happening on my first flight after that version that got released on, I believe, April 11th. Might be a little mistaken about the exact date, but you get the idea. And I thought, well, I'm just going to give it a short while. Sometimes GSX has these things and it's eventually going to fix itself. So that's why initially I didn't even mention anything of that on my flights and just use different pushback opportunities. What's interesting to mention here as well is that whenever I flew the Phoenix Airbus, it basically interacted normally with GSX. So it wasn't the entire GSX program, but it was more of the menu that failed to load. Now eventually I decided, well, this is getting a little bit annoying. And therefore, I asked for customer support in the GSX forum. And whenever I went there, I noticed that a topic dating back to early April, basically dating all the way back to the 3rd of April, already existed. So I just posted in that topic that, hey, I have the same issue as well. It consists for about two weeks now. Restarting Quartal does not help. Restarting the flight and even reinstalling GSX do not help either. I tried to switch between Sim Update 1 and Sim Update 2 beta, but neither helped either. And I also posted the Phoenix observation, hoping to give Umberto and the GSX team as much information as required to analyze the problem and maybe provide some help. Now, after this, GSX just replied and said, yeah, I can only repeat and confirm that it doesn't happen here. Please follow all the suggestions on the manual, page 97. So that's what I tried, and I want to look into that manual with you guys for now. So this is the GSX manual, page 97, and indeed over here it says GSX toolbar menu stuck on loading. It gives a couple of possible reasons for this, and on the right hand side it tries to give us some solutions of what you can do, which is basically close the GSX menu in the toolbar, then restart Quartal, wait a little bit, usually 10 to 15 seconds, open the GSX menu again, which should work now. Now, as I had already posted, restarting Quartal does not help. Now, there is a little bit of further advice there, saying that the Quartal engine may have crashed and it advises you to start Quartal for GSX manually, which I also tried, but it didn't work neither, and indeed, if that was the case, then you would get a different error message than the one that's um, in the title of the topic, but of course, the developers would know that, or at least you would think so. Well, and that's basically all that it gives you on this part of the manual here. The rest isn't about GSX not starting, and this isn't about a third party as well, and on the page B4, which will be mentioned a little bit later in the topic, it just gives you some more troubleshooting, but basically it doesn't give you anything about the G error message that I got here. So a couple of others posted down there as well, posted the very same error that I got, and basically Umberto just said once again, it doesn't happen for him, please follow the suggestions in the manual. Now, again, since that basically didn't help, others and myself replied that we tried that, 
but it doesn't work. Um, note this, this was on April 29, that was the very same for his post. And then for a very long time there is no response from Umberto at all, we go on to the second page of the topic, there is again no response from Umberto at all, I'm asking again on the 4th, so that's like 5 days later. And then, well, the second post here was on a different topic, which Umberto simply merged into this one. And then he finally answered. And he quoted what I said, which is that, except for essentially an RTFM and a read the manual, which only restart, advises to restart Quadl, I couldn't get any answers. Which is basically how that support went. And then Umberto just replies, of course this fixes the problem, as explained so many times. So tell me again, Umberto. How is any of this a fix to the problem? It isn't. And when I said in support that I tried the steps from the manual, they didn't help. You can't just come back and tell me, yes, it does fix the problem. No, it doesn't. GSX doesn't work. So, well, this is what I waited for for over a week. Just for the guy to come back and tell me, yes, my advice fixes the problem. No, it doesn't. Otherwise... I am absolutely sure I would have seen it fixed. Well, so ultimately I gave up and I just decided, okay, screw that support, it doesn't help me at all. So I tried to look for the problem myself. And indeed I did found a solution to the problem, but here is what I had to do. And guys, this is of course absolutely unofficial because it may or may not work and I can't guarantee that this may make the problem worse for you. I can't guarantee that it might break anything for you. The only guys who could guarantee a correct solution would be FS Dream Team, respectively the GSX developers, but they refuse to provide the support. As always, just advice to do the steps in the manual, which don't help fix the problem. So well, let's go into it and let's have a look at what the solution actually was for me. So, first of all, I had to uninstall GSX, but that wasn't everything. I had to go further into the community folder, which had some remnants of GSX, especially the folders FS Dream Team GSX Pro and the folders FS Dream Team GSX World of Jetways. And I had to delete both of them manually after uninstalling GSX. Then I had to go into the app data, so that's just you type percent app data percent into the uh, windows explorer and then you scroll all the way down to the folder virtually and in there you have a gsx folder and i had to delete that one manually as well after i did all of that i reinstalled gsx started the simulator and got an ever-repeating GSX chain of errors. That would be a different topic for a different video. So I closed the sim again, uninstalled it again, made sure that all that previously mentioned folders were removed. And then I started the simulator without GSX installed. And that kind of did the trick. So with GSX completely uninstalled, I started the simulator, everything worked fine. Then I closed the simulator again, reinstalled GSX, but before I could even do that, I had to run that live update thing, that FS Dream Team live update. Then I could go back into the Universal Installer and install GSX, and then it would eventually work without any problems. And as you can see over here, the GSX menu does actually show up again. And that is how I have eventually fixed this problem. Now, unfortunately, I cannot guarantee that this is going to work for you as well, but the solution seems to have been that I started the simulator in between the reinstallations and that I manually, manually deleted any of the remnants of GSX before reinstalling. Now, I want to have a little other look into the GSX forum again, because I really think the guys at GSX need to improve their customer support. It really doesn't work to insist that something fixes the problem if the customer obviously tells you that it did not fix the problem. And it really doesn't help to insist that you are right and that the others are wrong. To give you another example, this is what another viewer under one of my previous videos reported. 
he made a bug report about the path where the ramp agents walk to be incorrect. And indeed, this user told me that he used to be a ramp agent as well in the past, so he knows what he's talking about. He's a pilot now, by the way. Really like it. Now, he basically posted this, saying that the ramp he walks into, behind, or directly in front of the engine during pushback, and it happens with every aircraft using the default GSX profile. Is there any way to fix this? And this is the screenshot he posted, clearly showing that the ramp agent is walking behind the engine during pushback. Now, the reply from GSX spans two lines on defending himself and ignoring the problem. And then he just says, yeah, the screenshot is not very clear about what the problem is supposed to be. Are you reporting the very presence of two wing walkers? Which is, of course, the feature that was highly requested. No, he's not talking about wing walkers at all. He's talking about the ramp agent, whom you can clearly see here, behind the engine, which is exactly what that user posted in his original topic. Then he replies, saying, again, it's not the wing walker, it's the ramp agent. On April 20th, on the 28th, that user complains, well, exaggerating a little bit on the time, but it was eight days of radio silence. And then, the only answer he gets is, it's not a bug. Well, it is a bug. And fixing the walking park of the pushback crews would be pretty easy. You simply have to put them two meters left of the pushback tuck. And that's it. That's how you would fix that in the real world. Another lovely example, somebody reporting that his problem with GSX getting the pushback wrong, instead of being pushed backwards, the tuck pulls him forward into the airport building. And what's the answer? GSX surely doesn't do that, and you are the only one reporting it. Well, GSX surely does do that, and I've even seen it myself. Let's have a look. So here we are, flying ultra short haul, ultra short haul in the Airbus A350, and if we just click play over here, you can clearly see GSX pulling us into the airport building. So yes, GSX surely does do that. And in my opinion, having worked in the flight simulation support industry for several years, actually earning the money for my ATPL while working in that industry, if you have, if you have a customer reporting a problem that you may not be aware of, it absolutely doesn't help to say that your program surely doesn't do that. Even more so, when there is evidence out there on the internet that it does. Now, fair enough, that evidence isn't in your own support channel right now. However, someone did post it down there, and actually that guy got banned for a couple of days for posting that. But it would probably help not to try and blame the customer, but much rather try and find a solution. And this is unfortunately a problem that we see over and over again with the GSX support. I'm not really sure what the problem is if they just don't speak enough English for, you know, knowing what the customers are reporting, which was obviously the case in case of the ramp agent problem that I talked about earlier. Or if it's just something of pride where you just reply that no, GSX surely doesn't pull you into a building when it obviously does. But... This is really not a way to treat customers, and maybe you should consider being a little bit more open to feedback that is provided, and you shouldn't just insist on reading the effing manual, or insist that your program doesn't do it, or tell the user that, you know, it's your fault. Perhaps that would kind of improve GSX and the relations to GSX as well, because I completely admit it, at this point, I'm just waiting for someone to develop a replacement. I'm using GSX for the pushbacks. Almost everything else of it sucks. I did send so much feedback to the GSX developers, never received any replies to those emails. Now, if I need to guess, I would say that they're probably going to say they never received an email from myself, because it would simply fit into their general style of managing their products. It's never their fault, it's always the others. So, who knows, they're probably going to blame me for being too dumb to hit the send button underneath an email or something. I don't know. In any case, 
I really think things have to improve with the GSX. I'm really hoping that someone else is going to develop a replacement because all of this GSX thing is incredibly buggy. The procedures aren't realistic. The developers refuse to accept criticism and improve their add-on, so we basically end up having this thing which unfortunately dominates the market. The only other attempt to get proper pushbacks is a hit and miss as well. Yes, I'm talking about that freeware that they turn into payware, that toolbar pushback thing, and then completely abandon the support, and like on every second attempt you try to start this, it just grays out the menu as well, and tells you, well, I ain't gonna work for you today. So, there is a little lack of that. If you're a developer and you're listening, create a pushback tool, create a good one, and... Who knows? You might just about dominate the market very soon when people actually figure out how bad GSX really just is. Well, that's going to finish today's little rant though. I do hope that at least the middle section telling you how I solved that problem is going to help some people. I do hope some others enjoyed the rant in the rest of this video. As always, be sure to like, comment and subscribe. Especially like if you hate GSX just as much as I do but think that there is simply no alternative available. And with that, I'm looking forward to see you all again on the next one.